So I know this is my film and I'm a little biased, but I would be uh, comfortable saying this film has the best soundtrack of any movie that will play at the festival this year. So that's awesome. This is obviously the 10th uh, year of Doc NYC, and it is so extraordinary for me as a documentary maker to be here introducing the festival, opening the festival with our film, Once We're Brothers. This was a documentary that I've been making for, it seems like forever, but it's only been a, a quick two and a half years. And uh, when we started making this film, it was a very ambitious Canadian documentary, a smaller sort of film, but we always wanted to do something bigger with it. And when it started, I was being shepherded by uh, White Pine Pictures, a legendary Canadian documentary company headed by Peter Raymont and uh, Universal Music uh, Canada's Shed Creative Agency, led by Dave Harris, Sam Sutherland, and Lana Bell Morrow. And together we were this little band making this film and we had a lot of passion and energy, but something extraordinary happened. I call it the Imagine Effect. We were able to partner with Imagine Documentaries, uh, this new initiative, this new arm of legendary Hollywood production company run by Ron Howard and Brian Grazier and Michael Rosenberg. And for us, this just took our little project and launched us into the stratosphere. And so to Justin Wilkes, Sarah Bernstein, and Meredith Coffers, I am so indebted. The brain trust that they brought to this project was incredible. And as a young fil filmmaker, people have asked me, you know, was it intimidating? to work with an organization, a company like Imagine, this storied company. And I have to say from day one, it has only been empowering. Um, Imagine has been phenomenal collaborators and I am grateful, really, really grateful. But for me, as I think about the celebration of this event, I am uh, reminded of uh, the spirit of how we made this film. My editor, Raymond O'Connor, who's here with us tonight and I, uh, worked tirelessly, tirelessly on the documentary with an assistant editor that just graduated from film school. He's the only guy we could afford. My little cousin who uh, graduated from business school wanted to work in, in movies, so I said, do you know how to do motion graphics? And he says, what's that? <laughs> and I said, well, you can learn this software and uh, you can help us on the movie. And uh, I had another buddy who just got laid off and he said, can I help? And I said, well, we need someone in the archival department, so you can join up and help me with that. And that was very much the spirit, the spirit of how we made the film. And uh, you know, the fact that we have this podium opening Doc NYC is really something special. I want to thank uh, Jared Levine, Robbie's manager, for being sort of the Robbie whisperer and always uh, uh, being able to listen and help over the last two years. Um, and I want to thank everyone else for being here and for coming to support documentary and to watch our film. Uh, it was absolutely made with love. And I think above all, you know, as, as I feel humbled to be here, uh, the person, the people I have to thank more than anybody else is Rick Danko, Richard Manuel, Yvonne <laughs> Hell, Garth Hudson, and the extraordinary Robbie Robertson for giving me this opportunity. Robbie? Isn't this fine? <laughs> this is just fantastic. And, uh, and I was just noticing, this was an old friend of mine, Penny Baker. Uh, I worked with him uh, first in 1966 uh, with Bob Dylan. And uh, God, he was, he was something special. So I'm glad you're acknowledging him too. <laughs> So, you know, as Daniel mentioned, you know, we started out in the basement of, of an idea, you know, just saying, you know, they said, you know, we really like your book. Uh, let's do a documentary, you know, based on your book, inspired by your book. And, and uh, so we, there was some possible directors of this and, and involvement in White Pine as Daniel mentioned and everything said, you know, that's what we do, and we do it really good, so let's start collaborating on ideas. And I thought it was a compliment for them to say, you know, we want to do a, a documentary inspired by your book. So 
we, we started just feeling our way around and you know, we were messing around with some ideas <clears throat> and my, it, it, the, it, the thoughts in the back of my mind were, you know, in whatever way that we do this, however we get there, we've got to get there. We've got to do something really good because otherwise it's just no fun for me at all. <laughs> so anyway, we tried, we, we met with some people, this didn't feel right to me. I wasn't, you know, I did the same thing with my book. There was people who wanted to write books on, on, on my story and I, I tried and I tried. Finally, I had to do it myself. So in this situation, I had that instinct to think, you know, if you don't feel this in your gut, then you don't have the goods. And so after we met with some people, then Jared, um, Jared said, I think you should meet with this young filmmaker. He, uh, he told people, because he's made some really good documentaries, and they said, what would you like to do next? And he said, I'd like to do a documentary based on Robbie's book. So it was, you know, it was an instinct that was already in the air. And then I met with Daniel and I thought, ah, something, something's going on here. You know, you can feel something. And, and um, in, in our meeting at one point I said, oh, wait a minute, uh, uh, how old are you? <laughs> and he said, uh, I'm 24. And I thought, good. <laughs> Good, because I was 24 when I made music from Big Pink with the band. Wow. So, <clears throat> so I had something to go on, I had something to base it on. And I just thought, I don't know, you know, you take a shot on something like that. You don't know what's it's going to happen, but you have a feeling and everything. And the dedication and the loyalty. And, uh, everything that Daniel put into this, uh, money can't buy. You just, you know, it is just that magical thing, that magical devotion. And so I can't even begin to tell you how much I'm thankful for Daniel being part of this. And because he planted this seed so well, other people were like, whoa, okay, something's going on over here. And the next thing we know, you know, Ron Howard and Brian Grazer, executive producers, next Martin Scorsese, he's, he's in, involved in it. We're bringing in people to help in something that has, that you could tell this thing could flourish. This thing could turn into one of those magical things that we love when that happens. And so, from this gut feeling, we are here tonight, and I'm so thrilled to be sharing this with you. I hope you really enjoy it. Thank you so much. So please stay in your seats uh, after the film, and we'll have Daniel and Robbie back.